Hello everyone. A couple years ago, I did a brief review of the Sony ECM VG1 short shotgun microphone. Unfortunately, I didn't have any other shotgun mics to compare it to at the time, and quite frankly, I could have done a better, more thorough job on the review. So I decided to make a bit of an update on this microphone, since there still isn't a whole lot of info out there. First, just a quick overview of the details. This microphone costs about $200, it has an XLR connection, a low-cut filter switch, and it includes a short XLR cable and a furry windscreen. Not a bad value for what you get. I am currently recording with the Sony VG1 over an audio interface directly into my laptop, but today I also have a Rode NTG2, a Sennheiser MKE600, and an Audio-Technica AT875R to compare it to. For starters, I'm just here in my booth, but after this, I will move outside. First up in the comparisons is the Audio-Technica AT875R, and I'll now be switching back and forth between this microphone and the Sony VG1. And just so you're aware, for all of the recording in my booth, I'm about six inches or so away from the front of the microphones. The Audio-Technica is a super short shotgun microphone, and it is noticeably shorter than the Sony, though it is slightly larger in diameter. It also feels just a touch heavier. The Audio-Technica is a bit less expensive, but it doesn't come with a furry windscreen or a low-cut filter, so if those add value for you, they may make the Sony worth the extra cost, of course, assuming the sound doesn't make your decision after listening to them. Next up is the Rode NTG2. This mic is essentially the same as the NTG1, but it has the option of being powered by a single AA battery, so it is physically longer. I believe the NTG1 is just a bit shorter than the Sony VG1, but this NTG2 is much longer. Both the NTG2 and 1 are more expensive than the Sony, both have low-cut filters and include foam windscreens. And as I mentioned, the NTG2 has the option for internal power from a AA battery. So with something like the NTG2, you could get like a 3.5mm to XLR adapter and plug this into a camera that had a 3.5mm input that did not have phantom power. Finally, we have the Sennheiser MKE600. This microphone is also much longer than the Sony, but like the NTG2, it can be powered by a AA battery, so that accounts for the increased length. It is the most expensive microphone in this comparison by far at $330. In addition to having a AA power option, it also has a low-cut filter and a power switch. The power switch might not sound like much, but it's definitely more convenient to flip a switch to save battery versus having to remove the battery from the NTG2 every time you finish recording. Now I'm outside and I have the microphone on a stand recording into a portable recorder. I'm starting with the Sony ECM VG1. I'm about three feet away from the microphone and it is directly pointing at me. I have the included furry windscreen on the Sony, but I will be using an aftermarket furry windscreen on the others because I don't think there would be much to learn from a bunch of wind noise. Uh, it's actually not all that windy right now, but you know, you never know. So. so this is how the Sony sounds at a fairly close three feet or so. I am surrounded by quite a bit of traffic noise. Most of it is somewhat distant, but there's definitely some, you know, some general rumble from traffic. Most of it is either behind the mic or 90 degrees off to the side, but it is there, so. Now I'm still about three feet away, but I'm around 45 degrees off axis from the mic, and this is how the audio sounds. Now I'm directly at 90 degrees to the microphone, and this is how the microphone is picking up my voice. Now I'm at 180 degrees, the microphone is pointing directly away, and this is how it sounds. Now I've moved the microphone back to about 10 feet away, with the microphone still pointing straight at me. I'll increase the levels to be similar to what I had before, and this is how the microphone is picking me up at about 10 feet away outside with, quite honestly, <laughs> quite a bit of uh, background noise. Now I've switched to the AT875R, and we'll do the same tests again. I'm starting out with the microphone facing directly towards me at about three feet of distance, and this is how the microphone sounds. Now I have the microphone about 45 degrees off axis, and this is how the 875R is picking me up. Now I am directly 90 degrees to the microphone, and this is how the AT875R sounds. Now I'm at 180 degrees with the microphone pointing directly away from me, and this is how the audio sounds. 
Now I've got the microphone back about 10 feet away with the microphone facing directly towards me and this is how the audio from the Audio-Technica sounds. Next up is the Rode NTG2 using phantom power from the recorder starting out at three feet with the microphone pointing directly at me and this is how it sounds. Now I've got the microphone at around 45 degrees off axis and this is how the NTG2 sounds uh, off axis like this. Now I've got the microphone at 90 degrees and this is how the microphone is picking me up from about three feet away. Now I've got the microphone directly pointing away from me, so I'm at 180 degrees, directly behind the NTG2, and this is how it sounds. And finally, now the microphone is about 10 feet away from me, the microphone is facing directly towards me, and this is how the Rode NTG2 sounds at about 10 feet away. Next up is the Sennheiser MKE 600 using phantom power from the recorder, and I'm starting out at 3 feet with the microphone pointing directly at me, and this is how it sounds. Now I've got the microphone about 45 degrees off axis, and this is how the MKE 600 sounds. Now I've got the microphone 90 degrees off axis, I'm directly 90 degrees from the side of the microphone, and this is how it sounds and how it's picking me up from 3 feet away. Now I'm at 180 degrees directly behind the MKE 600 pointing directly away from me, and this is how the microphone is picking me up, still at 3 feet. And finally, now the microphone is about 10 feet away, with the microphone facing directly towards me, and this is how the Sennheiser MKE 600 sounds. And as a final point of comparison, I'm back to recording with the Sony at about 3 feet away. And I presently, and up to this point, have had the low cut filter turned off. And now I've just switched the low cut filter on, so the microphone should be rolling off the lowest frequencies. This should give you an idea of how much this affects the traffic noise that's present right now, as well as how much or little it affects the sound of my voice. And now I've switched the low cut filter back off, and this is how it sounds by comparison, just in normal flat mode. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of what you can expect from this microphone and how it compares to some of the other kind of popular microphones in the short shotgun microphone category. The sensitivity of the Sony microphone is very good. I would say it's very similar to the Audio-Technica. The Sennheiser is about the same, maybe just a hair less, and the Rode NTG2 is definitely a noticeable step down in sensitivity. It takes a little bit more gain to get the same levels out of the NTG2. Not bad, but it does take a little bit more gain. Surprisingly, I would say the Audio-Technica probably had the most neutral sound overall out of these four microphones. The Sony was just a little bit brighter, maybe a little bit more mid-forward, and the other two, the Sennheiser and the Rode, were just a little bit darker. I kind of feel like the Sony might mix just a little bit better with some of the lavalier microphones that are out there, but again, they all sound pretty close. I think they all do a perfectly good job. So hopefully that was helpful and maybe gives you just a little bit better idea of what to expect out of this microphone. If you have any questions or if there's anything else you'd like me to test out, let me know. As always, thanks for watching. Take care.